We are at the first round of the Enduro World Series here in Italy in the Trentino region, Val de Fassa. A uh, hell of a venue, looks absolutely amazing, but more importantly from my perspective, there's loads of cool new bikes and tech. So let's get to it, shall we, and check it out. Okay, so we're in the pits here at Val de Fassa, and one of the earliest bikes we've seen floating around has been this Da Vinci prototype. Uh, you might have seen some images online, didn't look quite as good as this. Uh, it's got a really cool looking wrap on here. Uh, numbers and details are pretty limited on this one right now. So you can tell you've got 29 inch wheels, it's got 160 mil travel, it's got single pivot, linkage driven, shock design using the Dave Weagle split pivot down there. Obviously it's got high pivot on here, which seems to be a bit of a buzzword at the moment. Uh, this particular one, I mean, it looks rad. And if you look on the top of the uh, down tube here, split pivot, question mark, amount of travel, but we're guessing 160. Maximum tire clearance, 29 by 4.8. Yeah, I think someone's messing with you here, as well as the uh, 90 degree seat angle that doesn't seem to exist. But uh, all good stuff. Looks like a hell of a bike to ride, this one. And check out the idler wheel position on here. It's got its own little casing that surrounds it, built-in chain guide, if you like. Uh, just super clean version of it. Some of them are still looking a little bit, could I say shonky? Would that be fair? I reckon. But this one looks really clean and tidy. And just to answer a question that actually comes up quite often on GMBN Tech about differencing four bar bikes and single pivot bikes. Uh, in respect to the fact that this has a pivot around the axle, this is the split pivot, it's still a single pivot bike because this swing arm here, the chain stay is uninterrupted. If you have to have a pivot in between the axle and your main pivot, it becomes a linkage or a four bar style system. So this is a single pivot with the linkage to drive that shock. Of course, being a high pivot means it's gonna have some sort of rearward axle path on there. Uh, we can't speculate too much on how much it has, but you're gonna bet this thing will monster truck through real rough terrain. So uh, keep an eye out for these ones in the World Series. Okay, so we're just taking a bit of a walk through the pits and just checking out Tom Wilson's bike actually on the orange stand. And I noticed that he's running the really cool suspension here from Formula. We've talked about it a few times on the show and you can change the compression units completely. Uh, Kelvin's actually got one here. He's gonna just talk to us a bit about how it's been working on the orange bikes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty unique system really, and I think it sort of defines them as a brand really. What they offer as far as a, a replaceable shim stack in the shop, which doesn't need a full strip down and service to replace. What you actually do, you can just take a, take a wrench, about, probably about 15 minutes just to remove the CTS, and you can change effectively your, your compression shim stack in, in a super short period of time. So you can go from any of their three standard settings, so we do like a, a gold, an orange and a green. Tom's actually running the green one, which is like the firmest option that we do. Uh, and we've also got a grey one, which was specifically shimmed up for orange, which was really nice one to do as well. I, I think it's such a good system. It's really refreshing to see a brand approaching, like sort of damping essentially like this. Yeah. Awesome system. Uh, anything else cool going on with Team Riders bikes this week? Yeah, actually, you know, the, the formula brakes have been really good for us. Like the, like the buckets of power, really nice lever feel, like loads of modulation in them. And the guys have been really excited, actually, the Michelin tyres and stuff as well have been going really, really strong. It's something, a few of them have been on different stuff over the years, and obviously I remember the Michelin from like back in the day. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, know, like kings of tyres back in the day, so it's really nice to have them on board. And, and yeah, the DH34s have been, have been a, a prime tyre of choice for the boys. So just in the Fox Tech pit area, uh, here with Jordy, I just want to ask you a few questions about the sort of stuff that happens during events like EWS. Yeah. Um, what sort of setups and tuning and stuff happens to the riders? Because I guess this one in particular is the first round. Yeah, it's the first round. It's been a long time since we've seen yeah. anybody for the most part. So it's kind of similar to any other race where you leave riders alone for a long period and they start to overthink things or underthink and overthink. Yeah. So you're kind of corralling everybody into a neutral territory again and then kind of working from there. I mean, you know how it is when you ride home all the time and then you go somewhere new, yeah. everything feels foreign again. Totally yeah, totally wrong, everything's weird. Don't know how the setup got that way, it wasn't me. So we're kind of just zeroing in everything again and starting from fresh almost. We also have a couple riders on the new damper tune. Sure. So we're trying to get some info from those guys. Uh, so what, what you got behind you here? What sort of setup you're running? Well, <laughs> kind of a messy one. We're still trying to like adapt between downhill and enduro so we just came from leo gang and then you shove everything one way and you kind of break out the other stuff you can tell the guy that's not really working and then the guy that is kind of working <laughs> but yeah 
So this is generally, these two are shock stations. We got the Andrianis here for vacuum bleeding. And then outside we do forks just because they're kind of more cumbersome. Two separate stations, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's easier to keep things organized that way. And, uh, so what, what's the most common thing that tends to happen here? To as far as Damp repair? Damper shimming or repairs? Or? Hardly any really. Like if we're doing that here, we've kind of made a mistake in the preseason. Okay. We should be really close with almost everything. Yeah. Really here, it's just keeping things in proper working order. Okay, so I've just met with Rick from EWS and his very nice Santa Cruz here, adorning a set of Victoria Manza tires that feel a lot different to the set I have. Yeah, we, Victoria came on board uh, at the start of last season, hooked us up with some tires very kindly. Um, we've been working with them extensively. Then over the off season, Ken from Victoria contacted myself and Ruri and said, I've got something a bit prototype, a bit special. Do you want to try them? We said yes, we opened them up, we thought that's a normal Mazda and then you feel them and they're just uh, a different tyre altogether. So we've been on these for uh, about two or three months now. We've been riding them on both our e-bikes and then yesterday for the first time on our normal mega tyres as well. So, And you've been getting on with them right? Yeah, they're superb. They're really, really good. I was a big fan of the Mazda as it was, as it is. Um, they roll really nice, they clear really well, but these guys are just, they're super, super soft. You don't really, you don't get that Velcro sort of feeling for like a really heavy downhill tyre. Um, they are especially noticeable whenever you go to somewhere where there's lots of routes and side grips really, really important and just keeping the bike tracking on a higher sort of line. Um, Rory's been loving them. We've done a lot of back-to-back -back riding together because obviously we ride at very different speeds. Um, I put the normal one back on my e-bike on one of our big rides just to experiment back to back. I had a massive crash, cartwheeled across the countryside and I've been on putting this one back in and I've had it in ever since, yeah. So so the cool thing about these tyres is they've got a four compound tread design on them. Uh, Vittoria currently are the only brand that can offer this. Other tyre manufacturers can produce three compounds. And the cool thing with this is they can place where they want the softer compounds. Now on the regular tyre, it's anything from about 45 up to about 55, eh? If I put my uh, handy Shore rubber durometer tester on here, it's ridiculously soft. So we're talking just over 30A on the central tread. I think it's pretty similar on the side from what I measured a minute ago, about 35 yeah. on the sidewall. So that's extremely soft. And looking at the condition of the tires as well, you would associate a super soft compound tire with something that just disintegrates. So I could only think that there's the graphene content in there that's keeping them together. Uh, to be honest, I, when we first took them out, they were that soft. I was expecting that we would do a lot of damage and go through them quite quickly, but even the sidewalls have stood up pretty well. Um, we've put, I think between us, a couple of hundred hours maybe on them. Yeah. And that's the tire as you see it now, yeah, that's, that's... still with the mouldings on it. Um, as I say, the big thing for me is whenever we get ready to come away to the Enduro World Series, I'd sometimes put a heavier casing tyre in the front and spend a few months just riding at home and getting used to how it feels. And honestly, the lack of drag um, is, for a tyre that soft is pretty incredible. Isn't this a sight for sore eyes? You can always count on Ibis bikes to deliver something special. Uh, this one is actually the race bike of Robin Walner. Uh, it's the Ibis Ritmo, of course, which is their Enduro bike, 29 inch wheels. The cool thing about this is the paint job is celebrating the fact that Ibis is actually 40 years old. Uh, so they started in 1981 and the paint job on this is reflecting exactly what they used to do on some of their early bikes. Now I've got some old shots with crazy paint jobs kind of like this that Scott used to have done on their steel bikes that he learned when he uh, learned from the founders of our sport, in fact. Uh, but super cool to see their progress this forwards and they're have, having a little nod to the past where they came from. Now there's a few particularly cool things about this bike on the reference. Some of them are custom setup things. Other things actually, just like the DW linkage system, something I really like on this particular bike. Uh, Ibis have long used the DW link system and arguably one of the better frame manufacturers uh, implementing the use of it. Quite a lot of anti-squat for climbing gear on there, really stands up on climbing. But the real cool thing is that the lower link itself is actually on bushings, that one moves uh, not too much. If you use bearings down there, they'd wear out faster. Whereas the upper ones that move a lot more, they're actually on bearings. So they're really sort of thinking about what's going on with the bike when it's being used in really severe terrain. 
really cool stuff to see. Uh, the tyres on here, interesting, they're the Maxxis Test Pilot tyres. So as we know, they've got their test scheme that they use with their professional racers and riders. Uh, it looks like this one's not much different, it's just a bigger casing essentially here. But we're seeing plenty of these floating around in the pits of Val de Fassa. Uh, but up to the handlebars, there's some really cool stuff. So Robin's running custom lock-on grips here. Uh, they're Lizard Skins ones with his name on. Also love that top cap detail, ride more, work less. I think we would we'd all like to do that a bit more and the tiny little Garmin and the Garmin mount super neat and tidy just a really pleasing looking cockpit I spent a bit of time making it look that neat um, I definitely aspire to have a cockpit that looks as good as this uh, really cool stuff to see uh, but I just could not walk past a bike that looked this good what do you reckon so back into uh, the racing schedule then Tim I guess this is your first one for quite some time yeah, first one since finale last year. Just did the two events last year and uh, yeah, a bit of a shock to the system. I haven't seen this trailer for two years pretty much. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, whoa! <laughs> almost a home from home, I guess, with all of your tools and all the gear you've got tucked away in here. Uh, kind of, yeah. I forgot where I, what I had on it actually. And, but of course, the biggest, well, one of the biggest concerns we have here is a worldwide lack of uh, parts to be able yeah. to even support our athletes we're so short on some products some product fine not a, not an issue but there are things that you just can't get so, yeah right. what sort of uh, typical jobs do you end up doing uh, in sort of race weeks like this um kind of a lot of general service on forks and rear shocks and then also retuning because this is the first event of the season so a lot of teams have brand new bikes and they're still working on their setups a little yeah. bit, especially this year because we never had the opportunity to do any pre-season test camps, really. Um, so, yeah, doing a lot of retuning work. So just another cool bike floating around the pits. Yeah. This one belongs to ALN. Now, something particularly cool about this, it's got practice wheels on here, but also it's running a mullet setup. Uh, so it's one of the first bikes we've seen running this setup here. Uh, many riders are choosing to run the same size wheel front and back. Uh, it's clearly working. But with the practice wheel, something important to say about EWS racing is the fact that you have to have your official EWS stickers that go on the wheels, on the frame, on various parts of the bike. And once they're on, you can't change that component. You've got to make it work for the entire race. Now notice that all the pro bikes we've seen so far don't have the stickers or the decals on the bike. And the reason for that is they'll wait until the very last minute before the race, before they put those stickers on, because chances are when they're practicing, they're going to damage something that's going to need replacing. Uh, so I feel like that could be actually a pretty pricey mistake for a privateer to make when they're racing their first EWS events by putting the uh, EWS stickers on straight away. You want to avoid that. As we know well from events like the Enduro World Series, uh, it's a proving ground for mountain bike technology and suspension. Riders negotiating some of the roughest terrain in the world. And here and there, you get a little gem, like this prototype by Rosignol that's just popped up in front of me. Now you'll probably be familiar with them from the skiing world, but this is the first time we've seen them in a mountain bike world with this prototype. So this one is an alloy frame, it's running 160 mil travel up front. Now traditionally, it comes as a 29 inch format in the bigger sizes and a 27 and a half inch format in the extra small and the small sizes. So this one belongs to racer Estelle Charles. It's actually the smaller size, running a 27.5 on the rear with a 29 on the front and 10 mil shorter on the suspension travel up there. Uh, so instead of running 170 forks, she's running 160, just to keep the front end down that bit more. Uh, it's a really cool finish on the bike. And something to note as well, they're running carbon rims on here. So we're trying to see, well, we tended to see a lot of people running alloy rims, but uh, some people have vary in between carbon or alloy frames. Uh, kind of refreshing to see an alloy frame with carbon wheels. There's also a prototype shock on here. So uh, this is for fast suspension. It's got two adjustments on here in, independent of the actual climb switch there. You've got low speed compression, and you've got mid speed compression, which isn't something I've seen on, on any mountain bike. You see low and high speed compression, low and high speed rebound, but to see the mid speed, that's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, but hey, brand new prototype bike. And judging by the way that these things are being ridden, I'd say keep your eye on them. Okay, so that's pretty much all the tech we've found so far. I'm going to keep rummaging through the pits over the course of the week and hopefully tie down a few more races to get some pro bike antics. Uh, look out the weekend for something like that coming on GMBN Tech. We've also got a show dropping tomorrow, so tune into the channel for more tech from here at Val de Fassa. Uh, see you in the next video. See you later.